Hi there, welcome back. In this brief video, I'm going to give you a very abbreviated introduction to the x86 architecture. So let's go ahead and begin. So the x86 architecture is what the Intel x86 processors are based off of, and they use the Complex Instruction Set Computer Architecture, or CISC. The processor provides several special purpose memory locations called registers. Each register has a special purpose and is at the heart of assembly programming. So let's take a look at the registers themselves. So registers are 32-bit integer registers. Many of these registers have 16-bit or 8-bit sub-registers that can be addressed apart from the register as a whole. Operating on a sub-register will leave the rest of the register unchanged. So this means that even though you have this 32-bit memory location, you don't have to use all 32 bits. You could use 16 bits or you could use 8 bits. Okay, so here is a table that summarizes the registers that we have available to us. Okay, I'll just go through each one of these briefly with their name and their role. So we've got the EAX register, which is used as an accumulator. We have the EBX register, which is a base register. We have the ECX register, which is a register that serves as a counter. We have the EDX register, which has been known as a double precision register. We have the ESI register, known as a source index register. We have the EDI register, known as the destination index register. We have EBP, the base pointer register. We have ESP, which is the stack pointer. And then we have two more registers, EIP, which stores the instruction pointer. That is the location of the current instruction that's going to be executed by the processor. And then we have a flags register, which is a collection of bits that indicate particular outcomes of, a, of, of an operation that you may perform. Now you can use a lot of these registers interchangeably. They are after all just memory locations, but traditionally EAX, EBX, ECX, etc., are used, I guess you can almost say stylistically within assembly programming for certain uses. All right, so let me show you a table that graphically represents these things. So each register is 32 bits. And if you look at each row, it represents the 32 bits, but each one of these registers can be broken down into sub-registers and the sub-register may be broken down into yet another sub-register. So the sky blue portion represents the beginning of all 32 bits and is the high 16 bits. That is the first 16 bits of the register. The orange portion represents a sub-register which is the bottom half of the 32-bit register, the low 16 bits. And if each one of those um, sub-registers, the, the lower half, it can be further subdivided into additional sub-registers, well, those are indicated with uh, green. So the EAX register, that accumulator register, has a high 16 bits and a low 16 bits. And the low 16 bits can be addressed by using the name AX, but the AX subregister can itself be further subdivided into the AH and AL subregisters. So AH is the high 8 bits of the AX subregister, and AL is the low 8 bits of the AX subregister. Similarly, for EBX, ECX, and EDX, we can subdivide those registers into two halves, the high 16 bits and the low 16 bits, and the low 16 bits of each one of those registers can in turn be subdivided into two sub-registers, each 
having 8 bits. Now the ESI, EDI, EBP, and ESP registers have a high 16 bits and are only subdivided once into a low 16 bits. So ESI, its subregister is SI, EDI, its subregister is DI, EBP has a subregister named BP, and ESP has a subregister named SP. Right? So we will use these registers by these names um, within our assembly programs to perform the different operations that we're going to do, such as adding, multiplying, dividing, um, supporting procedure calls, you know, the equivalent of a function, uh, manipulating parameters or the parameter equivalent, uh, and so forth. Okay, so let's summarize. We introduced the main registers in the CISC architecture for the, 80, for the x86 family. I should mention that the x86 architecture was chosen so we could have the full flavor of assembly programming without the complexity of the 64-bit processor families. Right? The, difference, the main difference between 32-bit programming and 64-bit programming is that in the 64-bit family, we have an additional 32 bits, right? So we've got um, registers that are 64 bits, which can be further subdivided into 32-bit into halves, which can then be further subdivided. It just adds a layer of complexity that we um, that I want to avoid in, the, in this video. It's not really necessary to learn assembly programming. Okay, so in future videos, we will go into more detail about the role of each register and how to use them. And in addition, we'll look at how to create variables, how to move data in and out of these registers, how to use the subregisters, uh, and so on. Okay, so that brings this video to a close. I want to keep it short and sweet and focused. So if you found this video helpful, please consider hitting that subscribe button or uh, hitting that or and or hitting that thumbs up button. Really appreciate it. it. Helps the channel out and helps me to know that I should keep on going. As usual, if you are a student of mine and you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email or stop by my office hours. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.